Society wants us to say, you know, hey, you know, he didn't say much more about women, so maybe he doesn't like women, or he didn't say much about the LGBT, but maybe he's not supportive of the LGBT, he didn't say much about white, maybe he's not anti white he didn't say much about the immigrant movement, well, maybe he's not, you know, so, so they'll try to divide you. Right? right? Dr. King was beginning to bring people together. Now, this isn't the kumbaya. I'm not giving you kumbaya. I'm giving you the fact that, Dr. in my opinion, from my study, Dr. King understood the scripture when Jesus said to Peter, Peter said, how can I prove that I love you? Talking to Jesus. He said, I have to say it three times. How can I prove that I love you? And all Jesus said was, Peter, feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. Man, I, there's no better example. Give me a better example than, than somebody feeding his sheep than Martin Luther King. Give me a better example. You can't find one. Because one, when Dr. King passed away, when Dr. King was assassinated, that spirit transcended all over the world. Yes, it did. All over the world. Because one, many people couldn't believe that somebody would shoot like that. Um, but, but America, when we understand where we are in America, um, it, it makes you concerned. It makes you um, sad. It, 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 it kind of breaks your heart, so to speak. Because to me, Dr. King was the best opportunity and one of the largest manifestations of equal justice for all. Out of many, we are one. And, and what, what, what's it? Uh, um, liberty and justice for all. Pretty much the, what, what America says it is. Dr. King was on the path to trying to create that. All right. Let me throw this out there. Sometimes you got to watch the people that's around you. Amen, lights. Here's where, because how did Jesus get crucified? Sometimes you just gotta keep watching people around you. Listen. Because not it's not that they did it. It's not that your 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 your, your friend pulled the trigger. Sometimes that, that can happen too. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people can put you in position mm -hmm. to be taken out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying well, yes I am. <laughs> yes I am. Because Judas didn't nailed Jesus to the cross. Mm -hmm. story. Judas told the Romans and soldiers where he was going to be. Mm -hmm. And when he was going to be there. Just follow that rabbit hole. Yep. Just follow that. I mean, it's, and it's not even a rabbit hole. Like, it's documented. I, actually, oh, what? <laughs> it's documented. Yeah. There was a whole, I said I wasn't going to talk about this. Talk about it. <laughs> but there's a whole transcript in a whole case, a criminal case around the assassination of Dr. King that names names, points out people. I'm not going to name the names. I'm going to tell you to read the book. I'm going to tell you where the, where the source is. But watch the people that are around you. And I'll leave you with, we don't need, I mean, and hear me right when I say it. Hear me right when I say it. Hear me right. Please hear me right. Hear me right. Hear me right. Hear me right. We don't need Martin Luther King to come back uh -huh. to save us, to get us together. Oh, right. Right. We don't need Malcolm to come back, or Martha's daughter to come back, or Maggie Evans to come back, or Fred Hamlet to come back. We need you. Right, right, right. Right, right where you are. Exactly. We need you. Because what is what is a disruptor? Can you be a disruptor? Can you identify injustice mm. and say, oh, hell no? Yeah. How dare you do that? Yes, you are. <laughs> and so my point is, that's what it started.
the people that were that, that asked Martin Luther King to leave the Montgomery boycott had no idea right. Right. that it was going to turn into what it turned into. Right. Because what happened, because the people that asked Martin Luther King to leave the Montgomery boycott knew that Martin Luther King was a newcomer to the community. So if it failed, they said, hey, yeah, he ain't know what he was doing. Right, right, right. You know, but once it succeeded, they said, hey, 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 I, I, I helped organize that. I, I invited Martin to leave. You know, yeah. once the cameras was rolling and once the pictures in the paper and the TV interviews came out, then there are people that say, hey, 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 I, I, I helped organize in the back. You know, so so this is my point, guys. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing, nothing. But hopefully, hopefully, what we get out of today, and what we get out of the legacy and the life of Martin Luther King, is we can all pick up our own piece yes. from Dr. King. Okay. Whether that be economic injustice, whether that be uh, equal rights for everybody, whether that's anti-war, the peace movement, or or, or um, fair housing. Do you know? That I want to talk about the blood. Ooh, talk about the blood. Ooh. But I want to talk about the blood. I'm, I'm not that bad. I want to talk about the blood. Of Dr. King. I know. I know. I know what I said. I know what I said. But I want to talk about the blood of Dr. King because April 11th. A lot of people don't realize this. Yes. April 11th, 1968. A week after Dr. King was assassinated. Lyndon Johnson signed into effect, into law, the Fair Housing Bill. Yeah. That was already, that was it, was, it wasn't going anywhere. It was stalled. People didn't want it. The politicians were fighting against it. But a week after Dr. King died, all of a sudden, the Fair Housing Act goes through legislation and signed into law by the president. In May of 1968, the, the sanitation workers from Memphis were, were accepted into the union. Do you understand that? So when we talk about the blood, you know, we talk about the blood having power. There's power in the blood. But most of us, here, 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 I'm going to leave you with this. Don't let your leaders have to shed blood to get progress. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes. Because I'm going to say, like Dr. King, I have no martyr complex. <laughs> you know, I want to live as long as anybody else. Yes. Um, but sometimes, if if you know it's going to go down, you prepare to go down. You prepare to, but, but I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, we, yeah. we got to form an army, too. That's it. We got to have offense and defense. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so, this is where we have to make sure that we protect and we hold our leadership in high regard. Yes. We make sure that they are safe. We make sure that we uh, pray for them and pray for one another and look for look forward to uh, fellowship with one another. Now, I, I'm, I don't know what the conclusion is, but I want to say that unfortunately, we see a lot of commercialization of the King holiday. We see politicians that have no that do no legislation whatsoever that reflects the legacy and the work of Dr. King. We see businesses, you know, don't buy a mattress on, on if I ever, if, if for whatever reason I, I ever get you know a holiday, don't don't allow people to sell mattresses right. <laughs> and have mat furniture sales right. on a holiday. Right. I mean. Because to, in honesty, in all honesty, if you, it's a sacred, this is a sacred day. Um, I mean, we may laugh, we may joke, but they killed the leader. And, uh, and, and shortly after Dr. King was assassinated, his close confidants began to split off. They began to, those that he was organizing went their own way. Then you had the Black Panthers form. Then you had um, different organizing bodies form. Yeah. You had the Rainbow Coalition here, the Black Panthers over there, CORE over here, the NAACP over there, and the Urban League, and everybody kind of went. The anti-war 
uh, folks begin to split. But when, once you have, what you have to understand is Dr. King was the center, was the hub that held all that together. Absolutely. And that was the threat because J. Edgar Hoover said Martin Luther King was the most dangerous man in America. Why? Because he was bringing people together? Yeah. Yeah, because he was bringing people together. Because he was telling white America just as much as black America that this is your problem too. This isn't just black people problem. I mean, and still the, the message still conveyed because people say, well, I don't know how we got Trump. Yes, I do. Yeah, what? what do you mean you don't know how? You know, folks sobbing on election night. We've been sobbing for 400 years. Ooh. That's good. It's That's true. That's good. It's the truth. I, I mean, I know what Robin Redeem is going through because I was on the campaign trail in 2016. And it is true. I, I've had a number of death threats. I've had the FBI call and say, hey, you know, we got you on the list. Uh, your life is in danger. And I, I'll tell you, this is a true story. We were protesting the RNC. Convention in Cleveland, Ohio, 2016. And I got a call from the FBI. Okay. And let me tell you the power of a compromise, the power of a friend, yeah. the power of leadership, and who you have close around you. Yeah. So I got this call, I'm having a conversation with the FBI. They tell me my life is in danger. And, and next thing you know, I'm like, all right. They said, we want you to leave Cleveland. All right. I'm about like, oh, all right, leave Cleveland. Anyway, I have, I have to pick up Dr. Cornell West from the airport, and we have dinner. And Dr. West, I tell Dr. West over dinner about the call that I had with the FBI. And Dr. West says, I mean, without even blinking, without even thinking, he said, well, if they're going to kill you, they're going to kill me because I'm going to be right beside you. He said, let's go. I said, all right, well, let's go. <laughs> Didn't even worry about it after that. That's right. That's right. And so my point is, Sometimes, and obviously, I'm still here <laughs> by the grace of God. And so, my point is, sometimes you just need that person, around, the right person around you, to say, "Hey, we're gonna go. We're gonna keep it moving." All right. Yes. And so, don't worry about what's gonna happen. Don't worry about your safety. Don't because because God gonna call you. He gonna call you. Whether it's a bullet, a car accident, a heart attack, a, a, a skateboard, you know, a chicken bone. Whether it's, hey, hey, hey. Whether it's, gonna, whether, whether it's your time, it's your time. I'm sorry. Hey, y'all might not like it. That's okay. But we got but we got to understand why we got breath in our body. Yes. To do what we can do right now to change this condition in this country. And right now we're in a pivotal time. Yes, so are. blood has been spilt for us to fellowship together. Blood has been spilt for us to vote. Blood has been spilt for us to eat in certain places together yeah. and all that. And and here's what where I think this church is on to something. Because, and I'm gonna finish after this, because Dr. King also said that the most segregated hour. Yes. In America, yes. this Sunday morning, yes. we have the ability to change that. Yes. I'm happy to have this kind of conversation yes. in front of Mitch Cummings, yes. in front of an integrated crowd. Yes, absolutely. I have an elderly white man right here. Yes, I'm happy to have this conversation yes. because you understand. Know 50 years ago, I might have been lynched for saying what I just said to y'all. I need y'all to understand where we are. So when people say, I'm not my grandparents, ho, 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 ho. You don't have any idea what your grandparents had to go through if you say that. Because your grandparents navigated successfully so you could be here. Right. Your grandparents said, you know, I remember my grandma was going to the store. Hey, don't touch nothing. Don't ask for nothing. Mm -hmm. Keep your mouth low, boys low. And I'm thinking, grandma, me? But as you get older, you realize that she's protected. You know, I'm gonna be honest. I never saw my grandfather talk to a white man. Yeah, yeah. When the this when the insurance man would come by the house to the door, 
he didn't even open the he sat right there. My grandma wouldn't handle that. When there was time to this one, you went and go pay bills. I remember when you had to go around ah, yeah, to right. pay the bill. Right. right? He would sit in the car. My grandmother would go in and handle that. I wish I had the foresight <coughs> to ask why. I wish, I mean, as a young boy, I wish I said, Granddad, why? I mean, we just all joking around like Granddad was lazy. Like, oh, he ain't gonna do nothing. He ain't gonna go. He just gonna sit there because, you know, he was interested in the sports and his westerns and, and the love boat. And I love Lucy and all that. <laughs> but you had to, but, but, but I had to, I, I, in hindsight, I'm thinking back to say, or in reflection, I'm thinking back like, why didn't Granddaddy call when the white man was around? Because he was a deacon, he was on the deacon board. He was the, the trustee. So on Sunday, he had his suit on his hat. Hey, good seat, good seat. You know, he took the money and, you know, he had all the money and took it in the back and, you know, proud on Sunday, <coughs> but quiet on Monday. What experience did he have? You get what I'm saying? This is, so this is the generation. So when I come up with my questions, <laughs> They look at me like, boy, you're going to get us in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, because I had a different interpretation. But I also feel that I'm a manifestation of their prayers. Amen. Amen. Yes. We are, so we are our grandparents. Yes. And we are a manifestation of their prayers. That's good, sir. So let's do what we need to do in honor, not just honor Martin Luther King, but honor our family, our forefathers, and our grandparents. Because I believe that our ancestors prayed yes. for those that would speak truth yes. to power. Yes. For those that for a liberating voice. Yes. For someone that would come to serve. Yes. For someone that would be understanding. <clears throat> and, 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 and I'm talking about all our grandparents, not just black people, grandma. I'm talking about white people too. There was some, even if they because guess what? White people got penalized too. Yes. Oh, you get caught helping some black folk yeah. register the vote, you get the night ride. You get you you get caught feeding some folks, so you paying them too good, or you oh no no no, no. you can't give you can't let uh, black people feel that they're on the same level as you. They got penalized too. So understand the the sacrifice and and the the, the contribution of all of our ancestors yes. here. And so I'm here to, I wanted to bring, hopefully bring the spirit yes. of Dr. King, Coretta Scott King, yes. Malcolm X, Major Evans, yes. Harriet Tubman, yes. Marcus Garvey, Fred Hampton, I mean whomever, Rosa Parks. Yes. I think we ought to include that in the service meeting. We ought to include calling out some yes. of the names yes. of the ancestors. Ruth Taylor, my grandmother, Gladys Nixon, my grandmother, yes, yes. Joe Nixon, my grandfather, Theodore Taylor, my grandfather. Just calling out some of the names of the ancestors of yes. that, that who brought you to where you are. Yes. If we could do that, I'm done. But if you could just, just together, just say a name of an ancestor that, that got you to where you are right now. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be here. Leona Lewis. Call out the name. Call out the name. Call out the name. Call out the name. Call out things. Call out. Call them out. Welcome into the space. Welcome into the space. That's it. We can say for Ashe, for our black nation, for our ancestors. That is our tradition. Yes. Yes. We honor our ancestors. All right. We appreciate our ancestors. Because regardless, if they won't perfect, you ain't perfect. But without them, there would be no us. Yes. So thank you for your time. Thank you. I don't know how much time I have, but I'm good. <laughs> Can we give it up for Dr. Roy? Take him one more time. Awesome.